<coughs> Look at you want to call, please. It's ahead. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, depending on where you are watching around the world. Welcome to Live World Snooker TV and the final qualifying round of the UK Championship. The second most important world ranking event on the calendar, together with the International Championship over in Chengdu, China. Jointly, they are second in importance to the World Championship. Today, as I said, it's the final qualifying round to earn a place at York. And the match we're going to be concentrating here on this stream is a battle of youth and experience. Extreme experience in the form of 42-year-old Peter Ebden. Extreme youth in the form of 17-year-old Luca Bressel from Belgium. Ebden entering the tournament at this stage. Bressel with already three wins under his belt, having started at the very first qualifying round earlier this week. So we're at the World Snooker Academy in Sheffield, England. All of the matches we're going to bring you today are the best of 11 frames. Interval after four. And there's a couple of streams for you in every session today. Currently over on our other stream on table one, Neil Folds is commentating on Joe Perry against Jack Lazowski, who made a, a maximum break yesterday. Then this afternoon, we begin at 2.30 UK time for the afternoon session. That's going to be myself and David Hendon commentating. And then tonight, Dave and Neil will complete the day's action. Anyway, the first scoring chance here goes to the teenager. This is a real clash, not just of age and experience, but also of styles. Bressel plays fluently, quickly. Ebden doesn't. Now, what's very interesting here is that Peter Ebden seems to be using the cue he was experimenting with in the Premier League last week. He played John what? Higgins up at the Spennymoor Leisure Centre. That was eight days ago. He beat Higgins 4-2. And he was using one of these new Zenith cues, which has the black ebonite ferrule. Ebden said then he liked it so much he might be tempted to use it going forward replacing the cue he's used for 28 years playing snooker and he's been as good to his word because I think it's the same cue here Seven. Yes, it's the Stamford cue makers who've developed this new Zenith Beryl. And I'm quoting their website here. It said the Zenith system significantly increases spin, grip and feel with reduced cue ball deflection. Now Ebden was very impressed when he used it in that match against John Higgins last week. And clearly, he was impressed enough to bring the cue out to use in what is a very important match for him in his quest to get back into the top 16. Brown off. Well, he tried to go into the pack, tried to force the angle, and he missed the brown by some distance. First impressions, he's been rather fortunate.
As always, of course, we'll keep you right up to date with the very latest scores. In this session, five other matches. Apart from this, it's Perry against Lazowski, which you can see on our other stream, of course, as I've told you before, here on LiveWorldSnooker.tv. It's Mark King against Zhao Gudong. Jamie Burnett up against six times world champion Steve Davis. Fergal O'Brien is taking on Dave Gilbert. And Jamie Cope faces Mark Joyce. All of these matches will provide a player who goes through to the final stages in York at the start of next month. Well played shot from Ebden, clever shot. Realised that it was going to be almost impossible not to drop on a colour there. So splitting the reds even more to his benefit, nicely on the blue. And this is a frame winning chance, even though the black is a little tied up. Leo Scullion is the referee. Now, Ebden asked for the cue ball to be clean before that shot. Leo, of course, complied with his wishes. But even then, that didn't seem to be the best of contacts. Just about wriggled in off the Thank near you. jaw. Yeah. You get the feeling with Ebden, there's no way he's going to be hurried around the table in this match for two reasons. One, he likes playing quite slowly anyway, but also <laughs> I think he realises that Luca Bressel, at the age of 17, a little impetuous, a little impatient, wants to get on with it. Thank you. 14. The whole feel of the match actually not dissimilar to the final qualifying round of the World Championship earlier this year when Ebden played Alfie Burden. Burden, older than Bressel, but pretty much the same kind of player. Ebden slowed it down and whitewashed Burden 10-0. Now, if the red to the right of the pin goes to the left-hand middle pocket, that could be a possible. He's clearly got a an open red, top left.
For Ebden on, good are they so far? He's missed two balls by a mile. And now Brussel right in amongst them. He's played really well in this championship so far, Brest. Won three matches. Seven. Involved the first qualifying and to be Scott Donaldson 6-5 there. Then Peter Lyons 6-4 and Lu Chuang from China 6-3. And the most notable aspect of his progress has been the fact that he's scored really heavily. 15. In fact, he's made five century breaks. Fourteen. Three against Donaldson, 110, 136 and 119. Two against Lyons, 110, 103. And against Luchuang, he wasn't too shabby in the scoring department either. Breaks of 89, 51, 53 and 51 highlighting his performance there thank you Nice shot that. It looked pretty simple, but at that angle, going into the middle pockets, you have to be really careful. Careful and accurate. There's a frame on the board on table one. Very quickly, 24. Joe Perry has taken a 1-0 lead over Jack Lazowski. 25. Now the removal of that red has opened up another one. 51. Well, that could have worked out better. He can still pop the red closest to the cue ball. Up to eight. But boy, it's difficult. It really is. Judging this angle. Did the right thing. It's a Rochelle, up to eight. Did the right thing. And played a pretty good safety as well. So the break ends at 38. Rochelle by 12 points.
Well, not a bad safety from Ebden in most respects, but catching the blue on the way up wasn't recommended because from this distance, Bressel is a very good potter indeed. Although on that occasion, he fell short. There's been some really good snooker here in Sheffield over the last four days. Two one four seven breaks, would you believe? Andy Hicks first, and then Jack Lazowski yesterday. Twenty-eight century breaks in total. And we've seen some gripping matches. I think perhaps the most interesting was yesterday when Steve Davis came back from 4-0 down to beat Pankaj Advani, the current World Billiards champion, 6-5. That earned Davis a meeting today with Jamie Burnett. They're still involved in their first frame. What a pot. Fantastic. Right. Pick that one out. I think the other storyline from the week has been the progress of Rod Lawler, who won a Players to a Championship event earlier this season. Rod is ultra methodical, and he's been involved in the evening session the last two Six. nights. And in fact, that session has become a morning session as well because. <laughs> On both occasions, he's won his match well after midnight. Seven. Last night, Lawler beat Gerard Green 6-4 at around 10-1. to one. Now, he got down and played that very quickly. That's his way, Bressel. Twelve. Didn't get the necessary cannon, and he's not on the other end either. Well, the black came very close to going again. It looked like the plant might be on. Obviously, he was confident it wasn't going to enter the pocket. But that was a little risky. The safety itself, perfectly OK. Although, Ebden shouldn't have too many issues in getting the cue ball back into bulk. Maybe in a more awkward position than it is now. Well, that was speculative, but Bressel played it in such a way that the cue ball would return to bulk, and it's worked out nicely. With the black over the yellow pocket like that, he understood that there was a potential for real gain with that shot, but he also knew that it was far too risky just to concentrate on the pot, and that's why the cue ball is there. Not well struck again. Now does Bressel believe that the red, the thin cut red to middle, is worth taking on? Seems as though he will. Nicely done. Bye.
I think we can give him the black, but he'll still need the last red in addition because if he pots the black, he will be 32 in front, but there will be 35 on the table. Well, the Red thought about it, but now it's in, and Bressel, 33 in front, 27 on, has left Ebden requiring a couple of snookers. And now the first frame, you would think, guaranteed to be over. Shell 14. Well, with some players, you would be surprised that they're carrying on. With Ebden, I'm not. 38 behind, 25 on the table. That means he needs four snookers. Well, that's the best way to end any kind of lengthy tactical duel. Russell, 41 to the good, 22 on. Five snookers needed now. And after that, it's all immaterial. He's potting some lovely balls. Seven and the three. This time Peter Ebden does concede. Now he had a couple of good early chances of the 2002 world champion. He missed a brown off its spot and then a red, a thin cutback red, which he grossly undercut. Bressel made a 38 break and then tidied up. And so the Belgian teenager leads the former world champion 1-0. Frame two coming up. Over on our other stream, where Neil Folds is providing words of wisdom, it's 1-0 for Joe Perry over Jack Lazowski still. The first frame of Mark King, Zhao Gudong still to be completed. That's also the case for Steve Davis and Jamie Burnett. Fergal O'Brien and Dave Gilbert separated by just one point in their first frame. That's with one red left. And it's the first frame also, Mar Joyce and Jamie Kate. Joyce leading by 20 points with just the colours remaining. Must be quite a, a disconcerting feeling for Peter Ebden, this, playing someone who's easily young enough to be his son. 25 years, the age difference. <coughs> Ebden had won ranking frame. events Peter Ebden to break. before Bressel was born. Ebden won the 1993 mm. Grand Prix in the October. Bressel was born 17 months later. Now then, 
the red will go, undoubtedly. If the black goes to the top left-hand pocket, this is a really good chance. Never frightened to play the drag shot, Peter Ebden. Always used it on a regular basis. And on that occasion, it was very much an asset. Eight. Nine. Ebden will be hoping for a better result today than in the final qualifying round of the UK Championship last season when he was beaten 6-3 by Rob Milkins. In fact, the first half and most of the second half of last season 16. was a wasteland for him. Just wasn't producing his best, wasn't getting to venues, let alone making an impact there. But then he played an awful lot of matches in the Championship League, and I think that instilled some confidence. And that confidence manifested itself at the China Open in Beijing. He beat Liang Wenbo in the final qualifying round, then Liu Haoshan, the wild card, 5-2. And then recorded victories over Matthew Stevens, John Higgins, Neil Robertson, Ding Wei, and in the final, Stephen Maguire to capture the title. Having done so, that was in early April, I thought he could possibly be in shape to have a reasonably extended run at the Crucible. Unlucky, though, to draw Ronnie O'Sullivan in the first round. O'Sullivan beat Ebden 10-4 and went on to lift the trophy. Off to wife. Underscrewed there. Has to take the cue ball in and out of Bork off the blue. At least he does have one open red still. Well, if Ebden applied right hand side onto the cue ball, which I believe he did there, it didn't take came off that side cushion as normally as you like and so the break will end at 36 Peter Ebden, 46 Now that was loose. Let me quickly tell you a couple of frames on the board on tables five and six. Fergal O'Brien, the former British Open champion from Dublin, he leads Dave Gilbert 1-0. And Mark Joyce from Warsaw in the West Midlands of England, he's 1-0 up on Jamie Cope. Aspects of Ebden's game so far provide a cause for concern. Another red that has gone astray, which shouldn't have. 
He's not sharp yet. Point. Another score to give you on table three, and this will please an awful lot of people. Steve Davis. He leads Jamie Burnett 1 0. Burnett led 46 points to nil in that frame. Davis, ever the fighter, came back to steal it on the colours. It would be smashing to get Steve back at York in a playing capacity. He will be there commentating for the BBC and doing presentation work. I think he'd love to take his cue up to the barbican. And we always talk about Steve Davis as the six times world champion, quite correctly. But it must also be remembered that he's a six time UK champion. Six. And his six victories came in a very short period of time, from 1980 to 1987 inclusive. We talk about Ebden being easily old enough to be Luca Bressel's father. Well, I suppose you could say that Steve Davis easily old enough to be his grandfather. Now then, what about that split? He cued oh. it nicely. And the red will go to right middle. Fifteen. <coughs> 21. Only one awkward red. That's the one on the left hand side cushion. Apart from that, the balls are very nicely spread, aren't they? Pink not on its own spot, but the blue and the black most certainly are easily available. Twenty-six. Twenty-seven. Didn't get hold of the cue ball there quite as much as he wanted to. Forty-four. Five. And he most certainly didn't want the kiss on the blue. Pot's still on. Now, though, position difficult. Indeed, the pot itself on the yellow is no bargain with the rest. Had to make Off sure digging into the cue ball there to avoid the pink. The only problem with that was he was coming a little too wide off both cushions. And that's left another test on this red. Off to eight. Well, that was a, a superb recovery. Not just the red, but the yellow before it. Another scoreline for you. Mark King has taken the opener against Zhao Gudong. Yeah. 
48. Look at Michelle, 48. Now, that was a, a classic case there of giving himself the pod psychologically, thinking about the position on the black to get the last red out, and the penultimate red eluded him. So a nice break, but only 12 points the difference. And now Ebden's got the chance to get the tactical advantage. Well, the way he jumped up there, I don't know whether it was because he knew he'd missed it or whether he knew he was deprived because of the kick. It was a kick, but I think his reaction came even before White had made contact with Red. Now then, what can Ebden do? I believe the Red closest to the pink goes past the pink into the yellow pocket, and so this is an opportunity to equalise. Over on the cue ball. And now, apart from the fact that the black is definitely missable, position on the last red is a real problem. Quite congested at that area of the table. Well, I think that shot made an awful lot of sense. Taking on the black was a risk. He was by no means certain of leaving himself on the last red. Quite possible, actually, that he could have snookered himself. And so snookering Brussel, entirely logical. And Ebden's decision has been vindicated from here now. If he doesn't make it 1-1, he will be kicking himself. Arrives at the colours, facing a seven-point deficit. So Ebden needs yellow to pink. Six. And that was really clumsy. Now, he believes he had a big bounce there. I'm not in a position to say whether that's the case or not. What I can tell you, what you can see for yourself, is that the cue ball has travelled much too far. And now Ebden needs to pop the green with the rest. Extra pressure as a consequence.
And you know, it's that kind of exchange that can make so much difference to a match. Ebden, for all the world, looked as though it was going to be 1-1. Now, for all the world, it looks like it's going to be 2-0 Brussel. And if Ebden feels aggrieved, if he feels as though the cushion did for him there, and if he lets that fester, it could have significant repercussions. Well. I think he's experienced enough to try and forget it, but whether he can is another matter. Brussel's not complaining. Green to pink clearance. And with that, the 17-year-old takes a 2-0 lead over the 42-year-old. Brussel 2, Peter Ebden 0. Yeah. The second frame is just over on table 1 as well, although it's a different scoreline there because Jack Lazowski has drawn level with Joe Perry. It wasn't exactly impressive. He had numerous chances to win the frame. Finally stumbled over the line. So Perry won. Lazowski won. Mark King leads Jiao Gudong 1-0. And he's on a 40 break at the moment. Early in frame 2. As I told you, it's Steve Davis 1, Jamie Burnett 0. Fergal O'Brien leads Dave Gilbert 1-0 also. Nothing much to choose between them in the second frame there. And it's looking good for... Mark Joyce, the former European junior champion, he leads Jamie Cope 1-0 and he leads by 60 points to 22 in frame two, 38 in front, with just two reds and therefore 43 points on the table. Now you might be wondering what's coming your way this afternoon on Live World Snooker TV. Well, five matches in the afternoon session. I'll be commentating on Martin Gould against Ben Wollaston. David Hendon will be doing Thachira Nu from Thailand against Michael Holt. And then this evening, we've got Ken Doherty against Michael White. That's going to be Neil Folds commentating on that one for you at 7.30. And we believe the other streaming match is Andrew Vigginson like against Liang Wenbo. Almost have a kick, but it takes the pace out. It's as if it kicks and puts it on. I think Ebden here is complaining to the referee yeah. about the bounce he had off the cushion. But I think it's futile now. Well, I know it's futile. There's nothing you can do about it, <coughs> apart from try and forget it. It's unfortunate. You have to say sympathy goes to him if he did have a big bounce. But there you go. It's happened before, and I can tell you what, it's definitely going to happen again. There's not a lot the referee can do about it, is there, really? In fact, there's only one person who could do something about it. H.G. Wells, the man who invented the first time machine. No relation, by the way, to Daniel Wells, who played in this tournament. So, Luca Bressel has taken a a call of nature break, as they say. Ebden sitting in his chair, stewing in his juice. I think the UK Championship this year up at York is going to be a really tremendous event. It's a lovely venue, the Barbican Centre. And York it's itself is a beautiful city. And I would highly recommend if you get the chance to go up there and watch some of the snooker, please do so. Because just before Christmas... It's a delightful place to be, the lights and the, the river. Lots of really, really good shopping as well. And we are guaranteed a real feast of snooker. The UK Championship proper, by the way, begins on the 1st of December and ends on the 9th.
Well, I think that shot is a reaction to what's just happened. Ebden missing the red by an absolute mile and planting Bressel right in amongst the balls straight away. One. The winner of this, by the way, goes forward to play Ricky Walden in the UK Championship. Walden, winner of the Wuxi Classic in China at the start of the season, but of late, not having the best of time on the circuit. And I think he would prefer to play Bressel than Ebden after what happened at the International Championship. Nice. Walden met Ebden in the quarterfinals there. And Ebden whitewashed him 6 0. Now this is a really good angle to go into the bunch. And the pink being on the green spot is not acting as a buffer. Well a good split of the reds all depends on whether he can pop the red that's closest to the cue ball. If he can, just float it in. Should be on the black. And we might be seeing a sizable break here. This could be the crucial shot. Thank Had to play you. that one really, really slowly to hold the cue ball for the black. And I thought his execution was top notch. Talking of which, Mark King currently on a century break. He's taken a 2-0 lead over Xiao Gudong. also by the way for Mark Joyce over Jamie Cope He scores quickly, doesn't he? 43. 44. That's the first half century of the match. He won. Highest break of the contest. Superseding Bressel's 48 in the previous frame. And there's clear potential for considerably more. Now, a lot of times, players don't like potting two reds simultaneously, but when you're well ahead, like Bressel is, no problem. Six. 
Well, he keeps potting them, doesn't he? Not the most cultured positional play in this break. But when the balls keep going in, that's all you want. And this is going to be one of the swift, swiftest frames that Peter Ebden's been involved in all season. Not that his involvement nice. has been substantial. Seventy-six. With a shell, seventy-six. And a fifth. Well, Peter Ebden concedes, and so very quickly, frame three is in the books. Ebden missed a red from distance. Russell made a 76 break, and with that, the 17-year-old has established a 3-0 lead. Ebden feeling terrible still about the, the missed green with the rest, which was a consequence of the <coughs> poor positional shot from the yellow in frame two when he had a, a glorious opportunity to draw level now from three nil down it really is uphill mind you he's one of the game's great fighters Edgar. and in the bulgarian open the latest players to a championship event which was played over the weekend in the first round there he came back from three nil down to beat Stuart bingham four three so on that basis coming back from three nil down here very much a possibility The other scores, well, Mark King leads Xiao Gudong. I told you he made a, a century break in the second frame. Slow going in the second frame of Jamie Burnett and Steve Davis. Davis won the first. It's 24-24 in the second. Fergal O'Brien has made a, a promising start against Dave Gilbert. O'Brien leading 2-0. Mark Joyce also leading 2-0 against Jamie Cove. And Jack Lazowski, in just a few seconds' time, is going to take a 2-1 lead over Joe Perry. In fact, the, the frame is over. Lazowski has won frame three by virtue of an 86 break. Well, Bressel did what Ebden did in the previous frame there, missed the red by some distance from distance. And this time it's Ebden at the table with a kind of scoring chance that Bressel had 10 minutes ago. Throughout the course of his career, Ebden has played an awful lot of matches. He will have many, many memories of fantastic snooker. This, though, is the polar opposite. Why? So far, it's been something of a nightmare for a variety of reasons. Five. 
Look at Brussel, five. On this occasion, though, Brussel unable to take advantage. And I'll tell you what, I've commentated on Ebden far too many times not to be able to come out with this particular observation. When you've got him down, you want to keep him there. Point. And make no mistake, Ebden is down at the moment. He's got this uncanny ability, Ebden, to play poorly, and then all of a sudden, when his back is really against the wall, to somehow mentally dig himself out of the deepest of holes and get back into contests he got no right to be in. Now, Brissell might not be aware of that. While things are going well for the Belgian, he needs to keep his foot on the pedal. When he won the World Championship in 2002, everyone recalls quite correctly his 18-17 victory over Stephen Hendry in the final. But for me, my endearing memory of that championship will be endearing and enduring, really, will be when he came back from two down with three to play to beat Matthew Stevens. He was actually one pot away from being eliminated from the championship made a wonderful clearance, which included a, a superb pink, I recall. Ended up winning in a decider, and then won the final in a decider as well against the game's greatest ever player. When it comes to mental strength, few players have more in the tank than Ebden. But that won't improve his mood. That was a total fluke. Red to middle, not intended. Hence the raised hand from Brussel. And even though he says sorry, it won't stop him playing the snooker in behind the black. That's a Brussel point. No harm done. very big frame this even with his powers of recuperation powers of recovery fighting spirit if Ebden were to fall 4-0 down remember this is a race to six it would be extremely difficult to get back into it at 3-1 undoubtedly manageable
calamitous. Absolutely calamitous. The worst possible occasion yeah. to suffer a miscue. Now Ebden there, no doubt worrying that a splurge of chalk has gone onto the cue ball. And that's why he's getting Leo Scully in to, to clean it. Has to start scoring Ebden. Only one break of any significance so far. 36 in the second frame. His scoring has been somewhat blunt. And it remains so. Ebden can't quite believe it. When you look at their respective performances this season, this really is a surprising scoreline. They're separated by 53 places in the world rankings. Ebden's 21st. Russell is 74th. But when you're close to the foot of the ladder, three wins in qualifying in the UK Championship, which is what Brussel has already tucked under the belt, will definitely lead to a significant climb. And if he can win this match as well, his ranking would be further boosted. One of those situations here where it's all about sorting out the first red. Didn't feel happy with one of those marginal pots, and so every credit, just keeping patient. Hebden is qualified for the final stages of all of the major world ranking events so far this season. But if he keeps playing like this, he's going to lose that distinction. He made the Wushi Classic by beating Matt Selt in the final qualifying round. Lost in the last 32 over in China to Stuart Bingham, the eventual runner-up. Ebden got to the final of the Australian Open, overcoming the likes of Michael Holt, Ding Wei, Sean Murphy and Marco Fu before losing to Barry Hawkins 9-3. He then beat David Grace to qualify for the Shanghai Masters. One. And then he fought back from, I think it was 5-1 down to beat Nigel Bond to qualify for the International Championship, where he defeated Stephen Maguire and Ricky Walden on the way to a semi-final against Jed Tremp, which he was not at his best, and was beaten 9-1. So he's picked up significant ranking points this season, and as I say, he's been involved in the final stages of all of the major ranking events that have been played thus far. So you would hate to miss out on the UK Championship. No.
Now, in contrast to Ebden, Bressel was 16. beaten in the third qualifying round of the Wuxi Classic by Jamie Burnett. He lost his opening qualifier in the Australian Open to Rod Lawler. Beaten by Andy Hicks in his second qualifying match in the Shanghai Masters. And he lost out to Anthony Hamilton 6-3 in the third qualifying round of the International Championship. So, while Ebden has been at the final stages of every major ranking event so far this season, Brussel hasn't been at one of them. Well, that wasn't the desired result, I can tell you, but at least he's got an alternative red. 24. To left-hand middle. On our other stream, Neil Fold is commentating on Joe Perry and Jack Lazowski. They've arrived at their mid-session interval just a moment or so ago. 2-2, two, two, the scoreline there. It's going well for Mark King on table two against Yao Gudong. King is just about to take a 3-0 lead. Off to one. Two. Looks like a marathon is developing on table three where Steve Davis still leads Jamie Burnett 1 0. Burnett 23 in front, but the colours remain, so Davis has the opportunity to double his advantage. Fergal O'Brien 2, Dave Gilbert 0, still. And now it's Mark Joyce 2, Jamie Cope 1, Cope winning frame three. Up to eight. Well, again, another it's really bad miss from Ebden. The pink at point-blank range, and if he's got away with that, he's been really fortunate. Well, he has. The hand raised, that's because the cue wall has just travelled far enough <coughs> to prevent Bressel potting the red to the right-hand ball pocket. What a terrible miss again from Ebden. Unusual placement of the Reds on the table. Six of them left, five in bulk. 
And the other one close to it as well. and mindful that his current 33-point lead could be erased with one mistake here. Well, I think he was working on the principle there that the only way he could leave that red was to the, the pocket he tried to knock it into. But if Brazil can get through to a red, that's a real miscalculation. And he could. Boy. How about that? Well, so far, not the Bye. most cultured cue ball control from the 17-year-old, one has to say, in the match. But he's spotting well. He's spotting certainly superior to that of his opponent. Thank you. Six. Now that is arguably the best positional yeah, well, shot he's played in the contest so far. Super. Still problems to work out though, the fact that one red is immediately behind the green. Another one is too close to the yellow. Oh. And now there's no position at all. But I suppose if Bressel just nestles in behind the blue, Ebden will be in some trouble. Cover shell, 12. Well, I miss recovery shell four. Well, no contact on any ball whatsoever. Brussel does have the thin cut Good red ball. to the green bag. Could have the cue ball replaced, of course. Because a foul and a miss, quite Very correctly, well, has been you. called. But also a free ball has been called. Now, I don't know whether that was originally called or whether it was a, a right. late one. But it certainly helped Brassell significantly. Five. 
it. Now to within striking distance of Ebden, and really you would think if Brussel is going to win the frame at this visit, it's the red behind the yellow that has to be solved. Dave. And I think that little flick could have done the trick. Well, playing it like that, always in danger of knocking the yellow to the side cushion. Thankfully for Brazil, he's knocked it over the middle. And now it's looking really, really good for him. He arrives at the colours just 16. one point behind. So from here, yellow to pink. 18. And bear in mind, yellow to pink for a 4-0 lead over the 2002 world champion and one of the biggest names involved in qualifying here today. 21. Ebden, not just the 2002 world champion, he's a winner 25. of nine world ranking tournaments. Oh, lovely little shot there just to chip the pink out. Clever use of running side. And there you go. Six. Peter Ebden, 4 0 down to a 17 year old who came into this tournament in the very first qualifying round. Look at Bressel 4, Peter Ebden 0. You had to sympathise with Ebden in the second frame. I think he did get a big bounce off the left hand side cushion when he was in to clear up. He then missed the green with the rest. Russell took green to pink, won the third frame with a 76 break, and there he pinches the fourth on the pink again. Wow, what a scoreline. We now have a 15 minute interval, and then we'll be back for frame number five after that. Just before I go, let me tell you the latest scores around this World Snooker Academy arena. Steve Davis has pinched the second frame from Jamie Burnett on the black. 2-0 Davis. So one former world champion going well, even if Peter Ebden isn't. Mark King, he leads Yao Gudong 3-0. Fergal O'Brien also 3-0 up on Dave Gilbert. It's 2-1 for Mark Joyce over Jamie Cope. Cope needing a snooker with two reds left in the fourth frame. And it's 2-2, Jack Lazowski and Joe Perry. So I'll be back at around 5 past 11 UK time. That's five past twelve central european for the resumption of this match where at the moment the teenager is in command two three pens with each new battery
Thank you. Are you coming to the door with him? Okay, Peter? Yeah? Frame five, look at Brazil to break. Sorry about the logo here, which is on the table as the fifth frame breaks off. It will be removed shortly. Welcome back, everyone, to Live World Snooker.tv and this final qualifying round match in the UK Championship where Luca Bressel, the 17-year-old from Belgium, has established a 4-0 lead over Peter Ebden, the 42-year-old former world champion. Now, normally during a mid-session interval, I pop out of the, the commentary box and have a little drink, maybe, or a, a saunter round. This time I actually stayed in here to see what was occurring. Now, if you kept the stream on, you might have noticed a lot of activity around the table. Ebden clearly unhappy with the bounce he had off the left-hand side cushion up towards Bork in the second frame when he was clearing up. It meant he overran for the green. He missed the green with the rest subsequently. And Brissell cleared up himself to take a 2-0 lead. Ebden obviously thought he had a an overly springy, violent bounce off that cushion. Well, it was interesting because Gary Wilkinson, who is one of the assistant tournament directors here, and of course a former world number five, who was a fine player, and who knows all about snooker, he came in to have a look at the table. Tested the cushion time and time again. Nothing untoward seemed as though it was happening Fine. and Wilkinson actually brushed around the table himself which is again unusual he did everything possible to detect a deficiency in the cushion and I don't think he could do so anyway that's water under the bridge now what happened in the second frame it's all about what's going to happen in the fifth and the first scoring chance has fallen to Brussel. Four. Five. What an absolutely delightful shot that was. It was a similar shot to that that enabled him to win the previous frame. Flicked the yellow away from the last red and went on to clear. And he judged Elf. the positional cannon there to perfection. Fourteen.
And now what a good opportunity. Bear in mind, if you're just joining us, I did actually Thanks. come out with this statistic a little earlier on, but it's worth repeating that Bristol, so far in this championship, has made five centuries. 21. He put together three in his 6-5 win over Scott Donaldson in the first round. Runs of 110, 136 and 119. And then he made two centuries against Peter Lyons in winning 6-4 in the second round. 110, 103 on that occasion. And then yesterday, in the third qualifying round, he overcame Lu Chuang from China, 6-3. 26. You might have detected from the sound there that the cue ball in red didn't have the best of contacts, but it didn't make any difference to the potting angle. 51. He cues very freely, doesn't he? An awful lot of potential. And it's just what the game needs. A potential world-class player from the continent of Europe. There hasn't been one yet. 56. Belgium has produced some good players, the likes of Steve Lemons, who had a good amateur career. Ivan van Veldhoven, useful sort. And, of course, Bjorn Hanivier. But Bressel has the potential to be the best of the lot. 44. Five. Kept it simple, but also effective. Following through, I think he played for the black, but he's on the pink anyway. And most importantly, the three reds opening up. Mm, now then, test here because the cue ball is really close to the side cushion. 51. Don't be surprised if he misses this. Oh, just about, just about in off the, the left-hand jaw. Brassell will be so relieved with that because from here now he should go on to win the frame. No ifs, buts or maybes. Well, this is a, a scoreline. 59. I just could not envisage. I honestly thought before the start, and I'm not saying this with hindsight, that Brussel had a ch good chance to progress. But I never imagined he would be leading 5-0. But if this red goes in, that's going to be a scenario. Sixty-six. And let me tell you, if you don't already know, victories from... 5-0 down in best of 11s are extremely rare. 72. 73. 79. Now it's just a matter of whether Brussel can go on and make his sixth century of the championship. 
Thank you. It's it. It's been a really good year for Belgian sport. They've got a number of really good footballers nowadays. Back in Michelle, September, Nicolas Kohlsaitz became the first Belgian to play in golf's Ryder Cup. And now Luca Bressel is becoming the first Belgian to be a real force in the game. He's certainly yeah. a real force in this match because he's established a 5-0 lead over Peter Ebden. I repeat, Luca Bressel 5, Peter Ebden 0. The 17-year-old, looking as though he's not got a care in the world. Ebden looking as though he's got the, the cares of the world on his shoulders. Now, what about the other scores? Well, Jack Lazowski, who made a one four seven break yesterday in overcoming Chen Ji, he actually made two centuries in that match. Well, he's made a century in frame five today against Joe Perry. And Jack Lazowski is back in front at 3-2. Fantastic news for fans of Steve Davis. And unashamedly, I am one of them because Davis leads Jamie Burnett 3-0. Davis halfway towards going back to the final stages of the UK Championship. His name is engraved on the trophy for this event six times. Mark Joyce, he's 3-1 up on Jamie Cope. It was 2-0 to Joyce. Cope won the third. Joyce the fourth. And the other match currently ongoing is Fergal O'Brien against Dave Gilbert. 3-1 to O'Brien. They're on their mid-session interval. You might be interested to know who these players come up against when they go through. Well, either Joyce or Cope will provide the first round opposition in York for the defending champion Judd Trump. Davis or Burnett will play Ali Carter. Lazowski or Joe Perry. They take on Stuart Bingham. Fergal O'Brien or Dave Gilbert. They provide the first round opposition for Stephen Maguire, the 2004 UK champion. Mark Williams, he plays Mark King or Xiao Guidong. It's 4-0 to King, and so you have to think it's going to be a battle of the left-handers there at the Barbican Centre. And Luca Bressel, we have to assume he's going to win from here. 5-0 up on Peter Ebden, with a winner to play Ricky Walden. This afternoon, by the way, our session begins at 2.30 British time. That's 3.30 Central European. Five matches will be played, two of them on our live streaming here on LiveWorldSnooker.tv. I'll be commentating on Martin Gould against Ben Wollaston. Rob Milkins takes on Rory McLeod. That's the, the tortoise and the hare match. Michael Holty plays Thepchaya and New on our other stream. David Hendon will be behind the microphone for that one. And the other two matches, Marcus Campbell against Tao Yupeng from China and Dominic Dale against rookie pro Ian Burns, who to get to this stage defeated Anthony Hamilton yesterday, 6-2. Burns also overcoming Kurt Mafflin and Michael Leslie before that. So frame six, can... Luca Bressel complete one of the most unlikely whitewashes you're ever likely to see. Let me quickly tell you that Jack Lazowski seems to be in top gear since the mid-session interval on table one. He's just made a 78 break, adding to his century in frame five. Jack Lazowski leads Joe Perry 4-2.
Needs to find some pace, the cue ball. That's OK, well done. Looks as though Jamie Cope is going to win frame five against Mark Joyce. Cope leading by 71 points with only five reds on the table. Joyce needs one snooker. Well, that could have been a, an awful lot worse. He didn't want to flick the red on the way back. Any thicker kind of contact. And the cue ball would have been in a much better position for Bressel. As it is, I think the blue might be coming to Ebden's rescue here in terms of whether Bressel can pop the red on the left-hand side of the table. Joyous news for Steve Davis fans, by the way. Davis currently on a break of 70 over on table three. Burnett needs snookers. It looks as though Davis is going to take a 4-0 lead. Confirmation, 4-0, it is. Well, that's a super pot from Ebden, and if the black goes, which I believe it will, an excellent positional shot as well. There aren't many people Eight. who would truly believe they can win 6-5 from 5-0 down. Ebden, though, is one of them. Nine. Sixteen. 
קצת אותי. Twenty-five. Not the best there. Thirty-two. Every aspect of Ebden's game. It's been a little weak so far, and positional play, certainly one of the culprits. Well, 5 nil down. Was he targeting the 147? As it is, only 32 points on the board. Russell has the opportunity to counter-attack. Or at least he did. Super pot and stopping the cue ball dead means he can pot the black as well. You know, in this kind of situation, personally, I would have written off the match. It but I've watched and commentated on Ebden far too often to know that this is far from a done deal if he can win a couple of frames put his opponent under pressure no. he could still pull it out of the fire he's that kind of animal But to miss a ball like that, unforgivable. Nine. His timing of that black was horrible. It was very reminiscent, actually, to a pot he missed early on in the semi-final against Judd Trump in the International Championship in Chengdu. Just seemed to decelerate into it. Well, if indeed, as I suspect, Ebden is using this new cue... I think the experiment might end after this. But again, Bressel is Point. wasteful. Don't want to give this man a foot in the door.
Wait. Just talking there about the international championship, it has to be bared in mind that, or bore in mind that, in the final qualifying round of that event, Ebden was 5 1 down to Nigel Bond, came back to win 6 5. His stubbornness in this kind of seemingly hopeless situation is second to none. Nine. Ebden's lead is now padded to 64 points. 67 on the table. So one more red needed. Well, he thought the plant was on. Clearly it wasn't. Now then. Well, he's played a very bad frame, hasn't he, Bressel? Let's hope that he's gone, hasn't been dropped, because you need to concentrate right to the finish line with Ebden. couple of score updates for you. Mark King is now leading Zhao Gudong 5-0. And Mark Joyce leads Jamie Cope only Well, that should put the end to a frame that Luca Bressel will want to forget in a hurry. It's only one small step on a, a very lengthy road to recovery. 11. But, repeating that awful cliche, it's one frame at a time. And Ebden knows if he can win the next couple to get it back to 5-3, all of a sudden, 18. pressure will be squarely on Brescia's shoulders. 19.
And if you think about it logically, 21. if Luca Bressel can win five consecutive frames from Ebden, Ebden 22. could well win five consecutive frames from him. Twenty-seven. Twenty-nine. Up to One. Well, this has been much improved from Ebden. Not faultless by any means. Peter Ebden, 41, and the frame. Nevertheless, a 41 clearance to blue, and a number of mistakes from Bressel mean that Ebden has avoided the ignominy of a whitewash. Luca Bressel still very much in the driver's seat, now leading by five frames to one. Both players have left the arena again. So that gives me the opportunity to give you the latest scores around this World Snooker Academy venue in Sheffield. Sheffield, by the way, is in South Yorkshire. I suppose it's about an hour's drive, maybe slightly more than that, up to York, which is in the same county. And it's at York, at the Barbican Centre, that this championship is going to be played. Championship proper, that is. 32 players are going to be there at the, the UK, which runs from December the 1st to December the 9th. All matches in that event are the best of 11 frames until we get to the, the semi-finals. Then it's best of 17, and the final is best of 19. So these latest scores I was promising you, well, Jack Lazowski still leading Joe Perry 4-2. Tactical start to frame number 7. Mark King, not had the best of seasons, but he's had a great morning because he leads Zhao Gudong 5-0. Steve Davis, he's on course to possibly complete a whitewash as well because he leads Jamie Burnett 4-0. Mind you, Davis will know from very recent personal experience that a 4-0 lead is not safe because he beat Pankaj Advani in the previous round yesterday, 6-5 from 4-0 and 5-4 down. So he will know that the job is not yet over. We know here Luca Bressel is leading Peter Ebden 5-1. In the slowest moving match of the morning so far, Fergal O'Brien at the moment, 3-1 up on Dave Gilbert, but it is going to be 4-1 quite shortly. O'Brien 71 ahead with just three reds left in frame five. And on table six, Mark Joyce is leading... Jamie Cope, 3-2. Now, I told you a little earlier about the afternoon fair here in the final qualifying round of the UK Championship. Let me tell you what's going to happen this evening. At 7.30 UK time, that's 8.30 Central European, it's going to be Hong Kong's Marco Fu against Rod Lawler, Tom Ford against Yu Delu. One of the matches we're going to stream, Andrew Higginson against Liang Wenbo. Ryan Day in something of a slump at the moment. Classy player, but not really producing the results of late. He takes on Matt Selt. And in our other stream match here on Live World Snooker.tv, Neil Foles will be commentating on Ken Doherty, the 1997 world champion, against a youngster from Wales, Michael White. Now, Bressel there hit the incorrect side of the red. That's how far he away he was from potting it. Terrible shot. One. Also, a terrible mistake on my part because I attributed it to the wrong player. It was, it was Abden. Now we've told you he's using a new cue and it's that kind of shot over distance that takes some getting used to 
And on that occasion, he absolutely butchered it. Three. The red that Ebden missed there was reminiscent of the one he missed right at the start of the third frame, which allowed Breslin to make a 76 break to win it quite quickly. Four. Can he do something similar here? Well, this looks pretty good because he wants to stun off the red he's going to pot and try and remove the red that's closest to the black. Thank you. Hey. They love it. Right. Well, red removed, but cue ball not far enough away from the black. I can confirm, by the way, that Fergal O'Brien has taken a 4-1 lead over Dave Gilbert. I can also tell you that Steve Davis and Jamie Burnett have resumed after their mid-session interval. Now, <laughs> frankly, that's the shot of a 17-year-old. Played more out of hope than expectation. He wasn't on the black. Should have taken his medicine. Now then, can Ebden clip in the black? Looking at this, it would seem unlikely, but quite often angles can be deceptive. Well, here goes. Well, he took the risk, and apart from the seven extra points he's received, no reward gained. Nine. Now then, he had to swerve that round the brown. Not only did he do that, a marginal swerve. Look at the position on the black. Excellent. Great shot, that. Sixteen. There's no doubt in my mind Ebden is playing with more confidence 24. and more rhythm over the last frame and a bit.
25. Well, again, not the best of contacts between Hugh Ball and Black. But Ebden's now got a lovely angle to go into the bunch. Oh, and it's wasted. One. Ebden was unlucky in the second frame. He believes he had a a big bounce off the left-hand cushion, which deprived him of ideal position on the green and then caused him to miss the green when he was clearing up to draw level at 1-1. So let's get that out of the way straight away. But we must also say that he hasn't played well. He's missed an awful lot of pots. Thank you. Bressel hasn't been earth-shatteringly good by any means. 16. But he's pulled out some cracking pots and definitely been good value for his lead. Look at Bressel, 16. The loser of this match is guaranteed to receive £5,500. That's around US dollars If you get to York in the last 32, you're on £7,500. And that from Brussels was very much on the money. Lovely pot. If Brussel does advance, it wouldn't be his biggest payday, of course. That was when he got to the Crucible back in April. And it really does seem as though he times his best qualifying efforts for the biggest tournaments. For a 17-year-old to qualify for both the World and UK Championship in the same year, quite an achievement, but he's not there yet. <coughs> Over the last couple of frames, he's been decidedly ragged. <coughs> the winner of this year's UK Championship, by the way, receives £125,000, which is nearly US dollars By the way, on table one, where Neil Folds is commentating, Joe Perry needs snookers in frame seven against Jack Lazowski. It looks as though Lazowski is going to take a 5-2 lead 
but he's not there quite yet. Yellow ball. Not bad from Ebden. Good pot. Pity about the cue ball being so close to the side cushion. Eight. Lots of pressure on this one. Four. And a similar kind of shot coming up. Cue ball a little more away from the cushion this time. But it's still a toughie. It's eleven four. Never easy, and the fact that he overcut the black meant that the cue ball travelled a little more than he anticipated. And consequently, the pot that's been left for Brussel to the middle pocket is no gimme. One. Well, rather than play directly, he took on a cheeky double. Can he clip the black in? I think it's possible, but the cue ball is very, very close. He will be concerned here about not just the push shot, but also the cue ball coming back off the side cushion and making a secondary contact with the tip of the cue because he has to hit the black reasonably hard. And playing it with the rest makes it even more difficult because you have to get not just the cue but also the rest out of the way. three points ahead in the frame he needs to go to York. Nine. Now bridging awkwardly like that and with his stance awkward as well. Fine pot. Getting closer to the finishing line all the time. You would think if he pots the last red, the end would be nigh. Oh, and it just catches in their jaw. Life for Ebden. In an hour or two's time, we'll be looking back on that and saying that was the turning point. This is a very big deal for Bressel. We mustn't underestimate that. When he qualified for the Crucible, he won four matches, beating Ian McCulloch, Barry Pinches, Michael Holt and Mark King. But claiming the scalp of Ebden would be perhaps his best achievement yet as a professional. Now, though, 
Ebden's got the chance to get back to 5 2. All about the pace on the cue ball, and it looks all right. Mind you, blue and pink like that Six. will be doing no favours whatsoever for Ebden. Scoreboard level as they arrive at the colours. and sort of holding his palms in the air as though to say, what can I do about that? Well, no one's watching in the arena. The referee was turned away. His opponent's not going to take any notice. So basically, he was gesturing to no one. Ebden, eight. And that wasn't the best from Ebden. He's left a shot to nothing, yes. But he's also left Bressel the chance to get down here with the cue ball. And put him in trouble. And that was a very bad shot from the youngster. Very bad. Played it far too hastily. Seems to me as though he's extremely nervous about getting over the line. And I think that's something that Ebden will have picked up on. Quite often, nervousness manifests itself in speed of play, especially with a youngster. Just needs to rein himself in, calm down, think clearly. Now the danger here, if Bressel misses the green, free ball. Didn't miss it though. and he will be more than satisfied with that outcome. Needs the cue ball to travel. It didn't. Now, Brassell is a really fast player, a quick sighter, but he's just getting down here and playing the shots as though he wants to get them out of the way. But that was ridiculously bad from Ebden. Only just made contact with the green. The danger of using a cue to which you are not accustomed. Hey. Better from Bristol. But the kiss wasn't. Wanted a, a fuller kiss, did Luca? 
one point in front. They both need brown, blue and pink. Well, he tried the delicate shot in behind the blue and it wasn't quite delicate enough. Now this cue ball could be really useful indeed for the youngster. The blue, pink and black providing a wall of colours if you can get the cue ball down into that corner of the table and indeed Ebden finds himself in a snooker. Again, a more than acceptable outcome. As is that, well played. Well, the teenager there has been very lucky indeed. Caught the brown far too thin. These are very tense moments, aren't they? Now you would think, looking at the scoreline, 5-1 shouldn't be too tense, but Bressel wants to get this win under his belt as quickly as possible. one point the difference and so both Ebden and Brussel need brown, blue and pink from here. Brussel needs the brown to travel. Again, he's dodged a bullet. Don't think Ebden can get through to the potting angle. No, he can't.
Um, oh, and what a blunder to going off at that moment. He stuck Bressel right in. An extraordinary mistake. And it could be an extraordinary error at the end of a match in which Ebden has made a whole succession of them. Bressel now five points to the good. And that makes so much difference because now Brown and Blue will leave Ebden requiring a snooker. Thank you. It's not over yet. Brussel needs to keep his concentration, knock in the pink. 15. You know, back in April, he qualified for the World Championship. As a 17 year old, he competed at the Crucible. Now he's going to do the same at the Barbican Centre in York because he's beaten Peter Ebden by six frames to one. It wasn't his best performance in terms of quality of this qualifying competition by any means. Over the course of his three previous matches, he made five century breaks. Three of them in one match against Scott Donaldson. But while the performance left something to be desired in terms of the mistakes he made,